I hate to break the fishing news after Ram Chuck, but I'd like to speak about the ice hockey. Congratulations. You're one of the 13 listeners of the Real Life Podcast. We just traded a migraine in for like an orgasm. You might want to mark that down. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All of my projects are on schedule until they're not. A member of the Nation Network of Podcasts. About as funny as we're going to get today. Monday afternoon. No Tyler. He dead. I killed him. <laughs> no Chalmers. He, he dead. dead. We killed him. We buried him in the yard. So many deaths. Yep. Liam's here. Liam's not, here. Not dead. Yet. Yet. Also known as Lehman. Mm-hmm. That's picking up steam too. Lehman? A, a Lehman. Not a Lehman. I don't know. I said a like Lehman. Lehman. Would you like me to tell you why? I, I need to know why. <laughs> so when I go to my girlfriend's barber's house for the first time. Hold on. Like, Baba or barber? Ba- Baba, like, like Ukrainian, hair place? U- Ukrainian grandma. Oh, wow. I legitimately <laughs> thought Barbara. <laughs> Baba, yeah. it sounded like Barbara again. I'm like, clearly he gets his hair cut at a residence. <laughs> it's not yes. Dorso, it's Dorso. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. So I go there and I'm, I'm there all day and this is the first time I've met her. And we're having dinner. I'm having a full on conversation with her. And then the phone rings. So she goes to pick up the phone and she's like, listing off everyone who's there. So she's going through the family and then she go, she gets to my name and she couldn't remember my name. So she just goes, and Lehman's here. Oh, so nice. since then for yeah, three Lehman. years straight, I've just been Lehman in that family now. Uh, so there you go. So we started calling him Lehman on Weather's Nation radio and it's starting to pick up. Uh, yeah, Lehman yeah. plays. Yeah. So actually we listened to the episode on the way back from Jasper after you guys announced that we were engaged. Well, so, so who doesn't go to it, Jasper to get engaged? Well, and also like Tyler. we kept saying Tyler was getting engaged every time he left, but now he is engaged, so it's not fun anymore. Yeah, we're gonna focus that energy. So now Lehman's Lehman. engaged. Now me. So she heard Lehman, and she was very happy to hear it. So it's good. We're all you good. You guys hear though that Amber's pregnant? Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's why Tyler's not here today. <laughs> That's why he's not here today because That's, he's the a rushed engagement. He's at the crib <laughs> the store. They're actually getting married. It's oh, a good wedding. Cool. I heard wedding. the pregnancy is just so far along you wouldn't even believe it. <laughs> Today's episode of Real Life is brought to you by DoorDash. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code NATION25. That's 25% off, up to $10 value. Zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the promo code NATION25. Offer valid in Canada, subject to change. Terms do apply. There we go. Mm -hmm. Barber. Barber. How are you supposed to say it? Uh, a baba. Uh, baba baba you yeah, just got like go. english you i just feel got like i'm in there i feel like i'm talking about um like forrest gump well when he's like australians like to just mix in an r and maybe yeah, some words massachusetts yeah so when i was in jasper this weekend so my last name has two r's yeah. so every time i say it's like h-o-r-r-o-b-i-n and nobody, like most of the time, people cannot pick it up, especially when I'm bucking a reservation. So the lady at the restaurant I was at over the weekend literally was like, I have no idea what you're saying to me. And just turned the screen around and made me type in my own name what for the- her. <laughs> Say your name. <laughs> Horribin. 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 Yeah, okay. I but I, I type, I have to sound it out because they can't spell it. Mm. You're going to uh, have to start uh. doing that thing where you go like... R as in Rita. R as in Rita. I said R. Uh, I said R uh, for Roger. Romeo. Military call. Is that, is it it Romeo? Military letters. I thought it was. I thought it was Roger. No. Because I said R for R uh, uh, for Roger, and she's like, I don't know what that Romeo. means. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, you know what Roger meant? You went R for Roger. She goes, I don't she, know what that means. What that she means. goes, You are confusing me, sir. Yeah. yeah. I take pride on trying to stay in the military call sign. I try. I. I. I, I, I'm, I you're try. Running out I letters like postal codes and shit. Yeah. Yeah. You got. I try, but I fuck up the letters. I don't know which ones are assigned to which, so I just make up my own and hope it's right. Kilo. Yeah, it's okay. Kilo. Really? Like, yeah. I know T Tango. That's, That's the one, one I know. Yeah. Kilo. Foxtrot. Well, yeah, Foxtrot. Obviously it's C is Charlie. Yep. Q is C- Quebec. Is it really? Yeah, I made the list. That's a hard one. Yeah. What's Z? Zebra? Uh, Zeta? Uh, uh, Catherine Zeta Jones? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what Z is, actually. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. I have another R story. So one time I went to Dairy Queen and I was ordering, this was a long time ago. I was ordering a Smarties Blizzard. And I like she, how you say Smarties. She couldn't understand what I was saying. And I had to spell out the entire word for her. Mm. And I thought, well, that's not very smart of you at all. If I had to spell out the entire word of Smarties for you to pick up that I wanted a Smarties Blizzard. It's lovely. So my, Aussie, my Aussie buddy at Stampede, I, I think it was good cigarettes, cigarettes and a lighter. 
<laughs> they gave him cigarettes and a lotto ticket. Yeah, I remember that. And a lotto. And a lotto. <laughs> He's Australian. Uh, it's fun with accents. Wanya, you had an eventful weekend you wanted to talk about. Oh, poop phone? You just prefaced it by saying two words, poop phone. I said, we should call this one poop phone. Yeah. Well, I guess part of this story is going to be relatable to the 12 listeners of real life who have children or potentially small people running around their house. But uh, Wanya Jr., let's just say it was irregular this weekend. Oh. So to fix things, what you do is you put him on the throne with his own show. I want to watch a show on the phone. Of course you can. And then you just leave him to oh, his no. business. Just leave him. Oh, no. He'll relax. Oh, no. no laxatives oh, required. No. It's all no. good times. Right? No. <laughs> so I'm like doing stuff and he's in there and he's chill. Right. And <laughs> I like poke my head around like everything. Cool. Yeah. Any action? Nope. All right. Well, give him, give the man his privacy. You don't need to be in his grill. I say to myself. <laughs> so then I'm doing something and I hear, uh, oh, I'm all done. All right. Great. So I go in the bathroom and this is kind of a visual joke, but he's sitting there like this. Right. So he's got the two hands on the chin. Yeah. And he's smiling. The thinker's pose. Yeah. I go, uh, where's the phone? And he just goes. <laughs> and points. Points to the toilet. Yeah. To the toilet. <laughs> to the target. And I go, oh, and I'm trying to stay calm, you know, leadership and all. Yep. Oh, and I look in the bowl and bless his heart. He'd gone to the bathroom. So we're winning. Mm. And the phone looked like an egg in a nest. Oh, no. <laughs> Poop phone. Oh, no. <laughs> so calmly, I'm like, oh, the phone fell in. Yeah, you didn't say anything. Just blinks and looks at me. <laughs> like most kids would say, the phone fell in. Uh, Somebody get the fuck in here. Help me. <laughs> Wanya Jr. Cool. Cool as ice. So I fish the phone out. <laughs> And I'm like, there's a lot wrong with this phone right now. It's what was like the pre-thought going to fish the phone out? Where like you're thinking of tactics, like do I have tongs I can grab? Like what's the thought here? Stay cool because I don't want to like probably enough exposed that hasn't touched the poo that you can grab it with. Well, he hadn't gone in a while. Oh, uh. so it truly it was a massive poo mm. <laughs> poop phone. So I'm staying calm. I'm like, hey man, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, this has been underwater and it's mostly made of poop. So I take the cover off and I like kind of clean it or whatever. And then I'm just like, okay, we're just going to leave it. And that's the end of the day. That's the end of our broadcast day. So we go to bed and at like four in the morning, I hear this little voice, daddy, daddy. It's a big man summoning me, daddy. So I go downstairs and he's just sitting there in his bed and he goes, uh, sorry about the poop phone. I'm like, did you just apologize to me in the middle of the night for dropping my phone and shit about eight hours ago? Daddy. Yeah. Sorry for the poop phone. And then it's in the morning, <laughs> in the morning, normally he likes to watch television in the morning on the phone. And I was like, hey, man, you want to watch a show on the phone while we eat breakfast? No. Why? <laughs> poop phone. And I was like, yeah, you're not wrong. So you had a crisis of conscience there in the middle of the night. Poop phone. No, he wasn't crying. He, he like, wanted he, to he offer his condolence. Yeah, sorry about poop phone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, so I'm not going to throw this phone out. Is that the phone right there? No, that I'm looking at? it's out there. I don't want it in the room. Poop phone. <laughs> Right. I got two phones, but that was good. Not getting mad. If I dropped my dad's imaginary iPhone in the toilet when I was three years old, I'd have got it in so much trouble. Oh, yeah. But oh, I was yeah. cool as ice. He was calm. Everybody's cool. Poop phone. Well, like don't ask to borrow my phone. Yeah. Ever again. Yeah. You'll always have that memory now. Every time you pick up a phone. I know. Of course. Also, tough. you get yourself like a new pair of AirPods or something. Just in case a lot of phone calls going on over at Castle Wanya. I know, but. I could throw it out. Like I put soap on it and I left it out and there's no problem with charging. I saw this. It knows this post on Insta. <laughs> and I think it's, it's, there's a McDonald's in Japan or Korea mm -hmm. and you go in there and by, by the sink, there's a little slot. You can put your phone in and it goes in and cleans your phone. So huh. in Japan, in a lot of stalls, there's the toilet paper dispenser. And then there's like this mini, um, paper like a hand towel dispenser and it's like really tiny paper and that's to clean your phone while you sit in the toilet phone culture is real yeah phone is life japan would not Making handle babies poop phone. Is not i imagine japan would have like a, a system for poop phone you know yeah yeah like a protocol yeah do you know like, they sell more diapers for adults than they do kids in japan now that is depressing jeez well it's just good living mm -hmm. You know, it's efficiency. Well, you know, there's a big, a lot of festival goers. A lot of fish. It's yeah. very efficient. Even if medically you don't need one at <clears> some point, you're just like, you know what? I can get one. 
Why don't I live Can like that? Can get one, should get one. Might get one. When I was going to Nate, I was doing a presentation in my sales class and I peed in an adult diaper just to see how much it could hold. It's a lot. That's commitment to the that, bit that was in front of the of class. Research? Wasn't in the class, but uh, I did it at home in the shower. I want to know. It's at least a full tank. So you could convince yourself, like to me, it'd be tough to convince yourself to pee. Not, no, I didn't have that issue. <laughs> He's a freak. <laughs> I just, I was ready to go and I, uh, I, I came up with a plan and I executed. Now, if you'd come to the front of the class to make a presentation wearing only an adult diaper and then stood their hands on hips and went, <laughs> So, I'd have given you an A were if you it was like pitching adult diapers. Yeah. Yes. It's a German class. You oh. did that. I give him an A. Yes. I was pitching it. adult diapers in my sales class, but I had a liter of water that I colored yellow that I poured into the diaper and held it over my head in the class. And what it were you selling? A liter? Oh, easy. It was Everyone should get hmm. down to adult diapers. What was the crux of your presentation? I don't remember, but probably if you need them by, these. if you need them, these are the ones I think. Room full of college age kids. Yeah. <laughs> so you picked the most random thing to sell. Yeah. That Did you work stuff. backwards from what would be the funniest thing to show kids? Probably. Yeah. This was yeah, early bag probably. milk. He played to the crowd. Mm-hmm. He knew. That Adult was a diapers. great. That was play. Oh, I nailed it. Yeah, Come on. Great. You got a presentation. You hold liter of piss looking liquid above your head yeah. in an adult diaper. No drips. Everybody's having a good time. I also gave samples to the entire class. Of pee? <laughs> well, of course. You gave everyone an adult diaper? Yeah, everybody got one. A little parting gift. A little back swag. That's, that's good salesmanship. See? Any reviews no from the class? No one gave a review, but I think there's a class full of liars. I guarantee at least one did. <laughs> oh, for sure. At oh, if you're one. giving me an adult diaper and I'm college age. And I just did a presentation about how you can unload the tank in there and it's still leak free. Come on. Well, the, the Hardo Festa concert goers will rock them. Yeah. Crush beers and not lose their spot. My Is that favorite. true? That is true. Yeah. Who? So on the Howard Stern show, there's a guy named Richard Christie that every concert he goes to, he wears an adult diaper so he doesn't miss a song. Yeah. <laughs> Must be a treat with the ladies. And he wants to, well, he's married. <laughs> I think he's married. Yeah. Yeah. Wife's married. Babe, I believe. Yeah, she is. What on earth? Yeah. <laughs> it's Kansas City living right there. Yeah. That baby fetish. You know, sometimes you just let it go. <laughs> Listen, if Mr. Brightside left? comes on, I'm not leaving. <laughs> Mr. Price. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm at the killer show, and Mr. Brightside comes on. Why is I'm going ex- ex- laughing extra about Mr. Brightside or something there. I don't know. Yeah. 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 So oh, okay. should I just say it? Yeah, I think you I should. can say it. So <laughs> we were talking about if there was um, a white person anthem song. Yeah. And we were thinking like about the ones what that gets be. the people going. Yeah. And I said, you're a sporting event. And then all of a sudden I land, please rise for the, the white person anthem. You don't think Mr. it's Ice Ice Baby? I think Mr. Brightside would. Mr. Brightside. With smashes. this era? Yep. Generational thing. Everybody's mm-hmm. like, when it's like coming ice, out of my cage ice. and I'll be doing just fine, everybody's <laughs> fired up. Ice Ice Baby would be. It would 80s white people witness. anthem, Living on a Prayer. Of oh, yeah. 90s yeah. white people anthem, Journey Don't Stop Believing. Mm-hmm. Also, a Neil Diamond song, Sweet Caroline. Sweet oh, Caroline. Yeah. I love Sweet Caroline. Yep. That's, that one's a spans generations, that one. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Lehman. You don't think it would be Mr. You don't think I would take the crown? I think it's a great pick. I, 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 I think it's in the conversation. <laughs> Has to be. Let us know. It, it gets me moving every time. You go into a bar, Mr. Brightside comes on, the whole place goes bananas. Mm. Yeah. These are the facts. <laughs> That's displayed. You could do that Creed song too. What's it called? Higher. Which one? Yeah. That yeah. One. All of them. Which I, anthem? I just remember when we were in Arizona and we were at the, what was that bar called? Devil's Advocate. Yeah. And that came on and everybody started singing. <laughs> you know on. what? Creed is making a comeback in a big way in 2024. And I love to see it. Yeah. Like an ironic comeback. <laughs> yeah. Like we're having a good time, but I wonder if they're in on the joke or they're just like, our popularity is soaring in 2024. The, ca- the checks cash the same. Don't matter. If your shit takes off. Question about uh, things taking off online. Is TikTok a different experience with no UMG music? Oh, I haven't even noticed. Really? I haven't been on TikTok in a while, actually. My algorithm's all fucked, so it's not enjoyable to me right now. I see. <clears throat> you know? I don't have TikTok. I see. Okay. Because I know that they took all the music off. I was just wondering if that... like Oh, no music? From UMG. So the biggest uh, music catalog in the world said, TikTok doesn't pay enough. We're not doing it anymore. And they pulled Bieber. They pulled everybody. Oh, that's interesting. So if you upload, oh, anything. so that makes sense. I had a, uh, I had a video of my dog Frank on my TikTok, and it was one of my bigger videos that I've had on there. I don't post on TikTok, but I got a notification. The music got wiped. Now I know why. Hmm. Music rights are wild online. You know, 
to have the sometimes like, they're there and then they're not to have the juice to like tell the world record labels to get bent. You have to be you have to be impressed. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's impressive. So you just like no popular music on there anymore. I was just for very oh, little. Mm. All right. So Bieber, Ariana Grande, Taylor Swift, all the hits. Taylor Swift. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Universal Music the, Group. The Killers still around? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank goodness. They are good enough for you. <laughs> yeah, yes. Killers are going to be in there for sure. I saw an article on Daily Mail over the weekend that said that one of the Gallagher boys, I think the older one, he now is like a vegan and he has to do all this stuff because Father Time caught up to him and he's been getting too fucked up his whole life. <laughs> now he's like, no, it's a day, every day is a blessing. Now it's vegan this and it doesn't look the same. Well. Other yeah. one. Liam, uh, Liam Gallagher. Oh, Liam, Liam Gallagher. Liam, Liam, Gallagher, Liam Gallagher. Liam Gallagher. Liam Gallagher. Liam Gallagher. There he is. There he is. He does not look like that anymore. That's right. how he looks now. Revealed. Getting back to reality. Yep. By the Daily Mail. There you go. And he's only 51. Come on, Oasis. Pull it together. Get back together. We'll get back together. He'll come back. I tried to watch that documentary that you told me to watch. And it was just like. Is it an Oasis documentary? Yeah. And yeah, it was just like, song. boy, those boys sure don't like each other. And that was the whole documentary. And I was like, well, who gives a fuck? That's another song that gets entered into the. Wonderwall? Yes. Wonderwall? Yeah. yeah. Wonderwall. yeah. It's a or, campfire uh, anthem. You give a guy a guitar at a campfire. If he knows Wonderwall, it's coming out. Don't look back in anger would be another one oh. from them that just smashes. They had some. They've got huge classics. We had about a huge 20 minute jam. discourse out there that one day talking about yeah. how mad we were. That they couldn't keep their shit together. Nobody wants to see Noel Gallagher and the high flying birds. Nobody wants to see this shit. Mm -mm. Even if he's playing the Oasis tunes, it's not the same. They don't have to talk to each other. When we went to Tool, one guy was hiding in a cube on the back, right? Yeah. Well, Gallagher boys could have a division right up the middle of the stage and two full bands. And I wouldn't give a flying fuck. They could come out with eight guys. Just look at the Rolling Stones. Those guys haven't talked to each other in decades. Years. Keith Richards have been dead since 1986. They get out there when the tour starts, though. They just bring them out like, you know. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, I'm surprised the hologram people aren't bigger thing after the Tupac hologram, you know? Yeah, it's kind of. Yeah, I it thought really disappeared after that. like hologram Tupac concert. They did hologram MJ. Yeah. Does he look better now? Well, I don't know. They can only do so much with holograms. Mm. But they do have a hologram MJ tour. I think he's a resident somewhere in Vegas. Hologram Tupac was. I could see that at like one of the hilarious casinos. Well, no, 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 no. The big, big money. You're going to get hologram MJ? Oh. That was in 2012, hologram Tupac. Really? Really? We've had no significant movement in the hologram. It's true. Remember series. how that year during the presidential Maybe election, hologram. Will I Am popped into CNN as a 3D hologram. Do you remember that? Yeah. No. He's like, hello. I thought this was going to be the future. Everybody was going to be hologram. We all be going to see Prince. You know what I mean? Hologram Prince. I'd go see that. There is an Amy Winehouse movie coming out. That's kind of like a like hologram. movie, dramatized movie or a docuseries or a documentary. It is a movie. Um, and I read that her dad had a ton of things to do with it. Like he insisted on creative control and sure enough in the trailer I saw, which was maybe a minute and a half, the dad was in the trailer like five different times, <laughs> like cheering, driving, opening a door for Amy, like always being supportive. That's the move. It's called back to black. It looked great. I love Amy Winehouse secret confession time. Lehman <laughs> love Amy Winehouse. Not so secret. <laughs> I don't think that has to be a confession. She had some great jams. She's a yep. songstress. Mm -hmm. She did. Mm -hmm. Great. Part voice. of the 27 club. Yep. Oh yeah. I told Kennedy club. about that today. It's her birthday. Turns 27. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. she made it. Oh wait, you gotta go to 28. You gotta you make it. I got a month left. Yeah. You do? Yeah. Jeez, okay. on. Well, may as well move into a bubble right now. Just lock <laughs> it in. Just How's your crippling on. heroin addiction? <laughs> non crippling. You'll make it. Yeah, he's going to be fine. <laughs> She'll be fine. Yeah. Fine. Leave him be all right. Uh, what do we think of the weekend? Oilers Talk brought to you by our friends at Snow Valley Aerial Park and Rainbow Valley Campground. Opening on May 31st, you got family fun all summer long. Attractions include the Aerial Tower, White Mud, White Mud Creek Mining Company, Target Golf, and the all-new Mini Golf. I personally am excited about the Target Golf. I think ripping golf balls at the, at the slopes is a great idea. Smart use of space. 100%. Creekside Eats will be open for snacks and refreshments. Watch for on-hill events all summer long. If you want to do a little camp in Wanye, I recommend Rainbow Valley Campground. It is Edmonton's only campground. Visit rainbow-valley.com and book your spot today. What did I think about the weekend? Nothing was good. Wrong. Zach Zach Hyman hit 50. Good. Well, that was good. That's all I care to remember. It sullies mm -hmm. it, though. It, it didn't feel like I'm good. happy for him, but like... Get your shit together. But did you see his speech where he's like, to all the little kids out there that might not be the best great. on their team? He's the best. The best. Is, is he? 
Is he the new Smitty? Honestly, man, without doubt, this yes. shit is growing on without me big time. Like shouting out all the kids that suck, and then saying you could be the new. Yeah. First time I told you that I felt like he's the new Smitty. We weren't on the same. page. I wasn't about. on the same page with you, man. But he's growing. Like I loved him, but Smitty is Smitty. Smitty, Smitty, Smitty is the best modern well, day Oiler, except for Connor and Leon. Well, I think Hyman. I think Smitty wishes he was Hyman. Wow. I think the torch has been passed. It's been passed. And, and hey, Smitty's the godfather of the nation. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. So like, shout out, but like, even our friend Zach today, is in charge. LeafsNation.com. The LeafsNation.com today had an article up right now saying Zach Hyman should still be with the Toronto. Read it. Read it. <laughs> Felt too <good>. bad. <clears throat> you had let a chance. Go. You let him go for Michael Bunting. And then let him go to. <laughs> let him go to. <laughs> We were also having a laugh about how Zach Hyman found his way to Toronto. Do you know who he was traded for bag milk? No. Do you know what team he was drafted by? Florida. Yes. Yeah. So there's a trade Florida and Toronto. Brad boys. No, no, no. You're going to laugh. What do you think that the guy plays for Edmonton currently? Yes. He's in the organization. So he's in Bakersfield. And well, we love he him. He has a great milk. nickname and we love him. Greg the Egg? Greg, Greg the, the Egg. egg. No way. Was traded for Zach Hyman. No Can you way. imagine? Yeah. What a trade. What a trade. We got them both. Yeah. Like, like he did Suckers. with the real winners. Right? You're bamboozled. About that. It's too Florida, hard Toronto was notes. a bamboozling and then Toronto to Edmonton was an even bam bigger boozling. But like, I wonder what that is, though. Like, it's amazing his progression in the last three years. It's he unbelievable. He just works hard. Like he but there's a, more than that. He's, he's like determined into he's got obviously skills, but like he figured out like his work ethic is obviously like one of the best. He's so jack and he's mm-hmm. he's determined. And so now he realized if I'm gonna score, be like, yeah, I can go grind in the corners, but like I am also going to own the blue paint. Well, there's the, Smitty like to say yeah. there's a lot of money in the blue paint. Is that what he said? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and also he figured out how to play with Connor perfectly. He knows exactly where Connor needs him to be. Him standing beside the net facing it's the not, point as his patented play yes. is so tough. Well, and, and like you can't like you can't move him. His legs are like trunks that like you can't like even lift his stick. Like like he owns his ice. And to see how the boys just elated when they he were scored. so happy. So then why couldn't you fucking win the game? You lost in Toronto. Zach scores 50. You're all so happy. How the hell do we let that go? They're sloppy. Calvin, yeah, I know. And old and Brickard I, wasn't in there today, yesterday. Couldn't kill a penalty. Couldn't make a save. Remember when Patrick Stefan missed that net and the others came down and scored? And then we and then signed did, did, did. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes. They lost that game. They did. How do you care to remember it? Me? I like thinking about him missing the net, going all the way down, and that was the last echo of the 06 Cup run the next And season. won the Stanley Cup. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> the real win was signing his kid many years later. Got his 100th point the other day in the dub. Where's he play anyway? Portland. Hmm. The Winterhawks, eh? Mm-hmm. I find that interesting. Of all the teams he could sign with, the James Port- Stefan. You yes. really have balls to sign where your dad. I love it. Hey. First game as an Oiler, he's going to dump one right into the empty net. The play's going to go bananas. We care Watch. more about that than Dallas fans care. So of this course. is like oh, the yeah. most <laughs> high pressure. They're like, who? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody remembers. Patrick this goes Stephen. like on the wall of Oilers memories, like the Hall of Fame of memories. Do you think Oilers. it's a. A bit weird they gave Madano a statue. No. No? No. Mike Madano statue? Is that you, Mike, Mike Madano? <laughs> you want to come No, he was yeah. He was with them forever. Like yeah. going back to the North Star days. Yeah. He was probably their all time leading point. We have a little looks yeah, here, Mike yeah. so He's got a cup he's there. One of the top, like he's probably top three American scorer. Yeah, okay. That yeah. he played think, yeah, why 20 do you think it's years weird? in Dallas and Minnesota. Twenty years. 20 you don't years. give everybody who played twenty. <laughs> yeah, but like, like you go out to LA and they gave fucking uh, what's his name a statue. Wow, this is what I'm saying. Can't give everybody a statue. Yeah, no, I think I, I think Mike Madano deserves. Who's making the calls here? The statue. Want a cup with them? I want to know how the statue looks. Madano, yeah. Madano statue. Well, why don't you think he should have got it? I don't know. I just don't think he's in the great, 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 great pantheon of people who deserve statues. Like top. Yeah. Top. He's one of the top five Americans. At least his statues. All right. He, I'm yeah, very like critical. Anze Kobitar, right? Dustin Brown. Dustin Brown. Oh, Dustin Brown. Arguably the worst, the worst statue one. of all time. Second worst. Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Yeah. Ronaldo's yeah, is worst, great. Yeah. Terrible. When we went down to LA for the playoffs, the last two years, I have to go around that side of crypto just to have a look at that thing. <laughs> So in the next like 30 years, is every arena going to have a statue of its best player out front? Like, I think so. I think so. Probably a Gilbert arena statue in the NBA. 
I don't know if he's the. Well, if you're in like a. I don't know. The fun thing about crypto is they've got statues for all kinds of people out front. Well, they do. It, it is a statue museum. <clears throat> what yeah, else they got? They got Kobe's Kobe. out there. Gretzky. They're gonna Dustin build. Brown. Well, they're they're gonna do like a Jonathan Quick, <laughs> really? Edzy Kopitar, Dustin Brown. Is not the how many gonna, fucking are they statues? Gonna honor that like dynasty. As long as they take the head off the existing Dustin Brown statue and port it over, because it's a master. No, no, I think it's the same one. Oh, as they're long just as gonna it stays build there. around it, yeah, as they should. Oh. I hope it's the same people then that build the other ones. Will Shaq eventually get a statue somewhere? He should have. a He's statue. getting his number retired in Orlando now. It's oh, weird. Which is like. So like long, long after the fact. Yeah. Will LeBron get a statue in Cleveland? Yeah. He Probably should. bring the Cleveland? championship back. Yeah. And it's LeBron. The greatest. Probably going to be the greatest player. All time NBA points leader. You mm-hmm. should get one. We're all I wonder if the, so are the Kings going to do it like how Toronto did it in front? Like they have all their retired players numbers, right? And the they're all sitting at that like, which is kind of a cool way to do it. Cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I, and, and uh, yeah, I think because like then it made like it, then it looks like an art installation. Yes, yeah, as opposed to like some random statue honor. Yeah, like dear leaders type statue. Well, when Connor wins the Stanley Cup in Edmonton and gets a statue, where does it go? Will Connor get a statue? Of course. If, Will there course. be a Gretzky and a Connor one if, day? And I, sh- I want to say when. Well, you can say when he plays. You know his whole career here mm-hmm. and wins us two cups, three cups, then yeah. Yeah, he's going to be out there. He deserves Will Leon like, get a statue? He deserves a statue wherever the hell it makes. Like mm. He deserves a bridge, a statue. Does Messier deserve a statue? Nah, no. He well, won five He cups? won more cups, but Gretzky was also like the greatest player of all time. I don't disagree with the Gretzky the, statue. Yeah. I'm just wondering where we... I don't do think the dry s- statue like, on statues. Dry no. Settle might not, but they might name a street after him. Dry Settle way. Dry Saddle Street. Drive. Or, uh, pissy Street? <laughs> oh, everybody loves Pissy Avenue. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I, I jumped to 50th Street just because he scored 50 goals all the time. But That's Hyman That's Street. That's right, yeah, Zach Hyman Street. They should name 29th <laughs> Avenue, Zach Hyman, or uh, Leon Avenue. Yeah. It's like way the hell out in Northeast Edmonton. And <laughs> it has the nothing Zach. on it. <laughs> well, it is interesting. Like Wayne, <laughs> Mitch Street. Wayne Gretzky Drive now goes by just Ghost Town. <laughs> Essentially, it made so much sense at the time. It did. Yeah. Now yeah. it should be the white mud. It should be Gretzky Drive. Yeah, let's rename it. All the business owners would be jacked about it. I remember when they all had to Sorry, rename Tony Henday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever you did, nothing for nobody. Get out of the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sam Car- Carrick <laughs> Avenue now Ring Road. <laughs> Sam Carrick Ring Road. Everybody's getting down to Sam Carrick Road. The mayor stands up during the playoff. Any Oiler to score tonight gets the Ring Road named after him. Sam Carrick. Connor Brown Avenue. <laughs> Connor Brown had momentum on the weekend. I thought he looked oh, good. Man. Two goals in a week. I know. I no was very close to scoring again against Ottawa. Yeah. Goddamn Corpusalo. I don't get him. Like he really elevates against us. He's 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 annoying to play against. But like when you out out, out shoot the opposition three to one. Oh, I know. <laughs> you should win the game. So every time Ottawa came down, they had such great chances. We just let them in. It was nuts. It was like they didn't get many shots, they had, but well, they every shot scored two of the exact same goal. Every yeah. shot was a like a scoring opportunity, wide open net or hit, wide open lane at the net. Hit the ball ten seconds in. That Vinny penalty was ridiculous, horrible. Oh, so dumb. He, he made that should if you're gonna call Vinny, then you gotta call um, Brady Kachuk for diving. Yeah. Well, yeah, even right. after the Vinny play, when Batherson does the turnaround one-handed swing of his stick, if you're calling that soft shit, then that soft shit should also be called. Mm. Oh, that was such an annoying game. And the Oilers couldn't kill anything. I hate losing Toronto. I just, I hate it. I hated it too because our boy Adam Seaborn was just blowing my phone oh, up the whole I time. I know, I know. I hate losing an early game because I'm like, well, time for bed. Like when you get smoked on an 8 p.m. start, you can just go to bed mad and wake up forgetful. Yeah. But when it's a 4 p.m. start, you're like, well, time for bed. It's 6.53 p.m. Then you got to stomp around the house all night mad. So I woke up at 2 a.m. this morning. Went straight to bed yesterday. Sorry about the poop phone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is wild. I can only imagine the horrors that are stored in your brain from poop phone. I was like, oh, it probably doesn't stink. Like four hours later, I smelled it. I was like, <laughs> shit. That's what I mean. You got to get yourself some AirPods Literally. if you're going to use that thing for a mobile I think he device. just got a, I remember when we went to Asia, I was like very anti-public bathroom going into this. And then I knew like, if we're going to go to Thailand, we're going to go to Cambodia, we're going to go to Laos. You can't be that guy. Yeah. He's yeah. like, oh, I'm not going to the bathroom until I leave th- three weeks later. This is the next level of that. 
Mm-hmm. You just have to be like, you know what? The world's a disgusting place. Mm-hmm. Oh, you have a child and just you're so just desensitized. This sensitized me. This this was oh, a bit. You're resensitized. Well, well, it's traumatic. You went, it's a traumatic experience. Like a diaper. I know it's transitory coming and going. But poop phones, my phone. That's true. You use that to conduct business. Of well, sorts. All, everything I play my games, I look at the Internet and giggle. It's all on poop phone. Yep. Do you think you're going to have a new one or you're just going to ride it know. up? It depends. Depends how much I hear about like, it from the big Did man. you get it in the charger and stuff? Well, yeah. Port? <laughs> I could take for sure my otter case off. Like I took it off and cleaned it all. Scrub, scrub. Yeah. I could do with a new otter case probably. <laughs> <laughs> Goes without saying. Well, there you have it. There you go. There you have it. If you have a fresh phone for Wanya. Yeah. Or a new otter case. Nation HQ. <clears throat> or an otter. Oh yeah. An otter box case. You know? Mm, mm, mm. Who's the next game? Happy birthday, Kennedy. Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Coming up in Winnipeg tomorrow. That'll be a challenge, but they're sliding at the They've moment. They've lost as well. three in a row. Hellebuck had an 808 in his last game. But he always just stands on his head against whoever. He's just so annoying. But Skinner does well against Winnipeg, too. Facts. Yeah. Last game, last time they played him, it was a really tight game. Duos found a way well, to beat him. OT, didn't they? No, they won three. And even one. the one we lost was super tight. Yeah, and it was because he went to overtime, but ironically, Skinner made that terrible mistake. Oh, right, that's what it was. The season, but he was really here. good in that game. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. I think they'll win tomorrow. They need to, because what were you telling me before? LA is right on our heels again. Yeah, LA is three points back. Not great. But they play Vancouver tonight. So I think the chase for first in the Pacific over. is over. We killed this yeah. weekend. We killed our pursuit gone. for first place. So now it's just solidify home ice. Got to get home ice. But Vegas and St. Louis play tonight. That's a big, like a <laughs> huge. Well, I, I'm, I'm a now I was a wild fan last week. Now I'm a St. Louis blues fan. Hmm. Which era? Current. Wow. <laughs> to try to <laughs> OG Gretzky and push out Vegas. Speaking of Gretzky era, St. Louis blues. I saw them wear those like red ones yeah. a little while With ago. With all the notes. Those are very odd jerseys. Oh, they're terrible. Some of those nineties jerseys. I was a white Midwest West guy. We had to wear them awful. too. Cause we were always so tied at the hip with the blues. Were you? And they made a version of it, yeah. Wait, wait, oh, were you the White Mud West Blues? No, no, but like, well, there was a White Mud West Blues, but uh, that wasn't my team. But uh, they always kind of adopted what the St. Louis Blues were doing with their jerseys. <laughs> Weird. So when they did that, we did that. Now I don't think, yeah, now there's a huge dissemination between the two. But oh, oh yeah, I guess I remember the old ones, the blue and yellow with like the stripes. Yeah. Yeah, of course. One thing I'm confused about Saturday's game against Toronto is how they started so badly. So Dude, badly for 40 minutes, they were awful, <sighs> but they, that power play when they got right away, they were kind of buzzing. Like dry saddle had a first really good shifts. chance. First couple of like Samson off save kind of towards the end of it. And then it just all disappeared. It was stupid. We and, were so sloppy. Yeah. It was awful. Wasn't a good weekend. If you ignore Zach Hyman's 50th. Goal. I hit a massive bet on Saturday. Well, that was funny because how many legs were on that thing? 10. Uh, seven. You hit a seven leg a parlay, seven, a seven leg prop parlay. What For turned some reason, what to what? Twenty two fifty into six hundred ninety seven bucks. <laughs> what That's you, why there's donuts here today. Those are from you. Yeah. Oh wow! What did you donuts? What did you? What was I it? only could have put that on? Oh, any? Eh? <laughs> what was, was your win? That would really help me climb. Oh, it was Hyman goal, Matthews goal, oh. Nylander point. Uh, Ekholm shot prop, Boo shot prop, Dry shot prop. I think that was it. Maybe it was six. It was just that. Wow. That was 33, uh, plus 3,300. That's incredible. It's fun. Like those long parlays are the new lotto tickets to me. Hold on. Rewind. Boo shot prop. Yeah. Well, you hate Boosh. <laughs> I <Okay>. likes money. <laughs> Who, Boosh is, well, Boosh is amazing offensive. Did you see? He took a rough. He had you a rough time. You see how time good he was Saturday. defensive this weekend. Back to back Saturdays, he made the same mistake. Like Ridiculous. that was like that's what frustrates me about Bush. But you still bet on him, of though. course, because it was a point. It was it was offense related. That's full controller disconnected. <clears throat> oh mode. man, it just it and so like that's why he can't be a legitimate number one. Do you know what's frustrating actually about the Bush play? I just thought about it. In the first period, they were showing Joel Edmondson absolutely burying like, Connor McDavid. He fucking owned us that entire game. Yeah. And then Bouchard has the opportunity. Different players, of course, but like you could have probably done the same to Matthews he and you chose not him. to. Yeah. And he, he didn't do was anything. In total control of that situation. Didn't want to touch him and then just let it all go. 
It was crazy. He could have done the same to McKinnon. Man. McKinnon the other week too. Like, if he him. blows up Matthews, he goes back to the bench at King. Yeah, hundred percent. His love... entire reputa- reputation changes. Who? Then... Reputation. Whose reputation? Bouchard. If he buries Matthews, oh, I like love Evan Bouchard, whatever. but his lack of urgency in the D zone oh, drives me crazy. Nuts. Well, that's the so like it, <clears> so you got to get him. Why is he on the ice against Matthews? Like all against that line. Yeah, come right. It's just like it's well. I understood, but still. On the flip side, Ekholm's on fire. Ekholm on is yeah. fire. Fucking, Eight well, points in his last six. That's a defenseman six. and low-key offensive. Him and Henrik. That's a defenseman. <laughs> he's like arguably top 10 D in the league. But like that's well, a yes, defenseman. Yes. Yeah, he's you our want, number one. You want six Ekholms. He's our number one. He's mm-hmm. the number one. For oh, sure. he's the number one for sure. Isn't for he sure. Six sure. seasons he got here. Like, yeah, something, something like that. Just yeah. Some Fuck. bananas. And he's like quietly putting up a half point per game yes, pace all season. Power play Nobody even says anything about it. top five Oilers D of all time? He's their best defenseman like, he, since like, Pronger. Like, like, since he, Pronger, but I was wondering, he's like, playing like like that. <laughs> like, I, like, let's have him play here for a while and establish a little bit of like a, '80s Oilers legacy. great D. Obviously, Paul Coffee, Coffey, but then it kind of slides. I mean, there's Charlie Huddy's in there. Yeah, Huddy was legit. Kevin Lowe. Kayla. Oh yeah, Kayla's. Like, but he wasn't like offensive plus sixty. He was like the best blue collar defenseman of all time. Kalo, no. <laughs> Yeah, I think he was more blue collar, like shut down than he doesn't have a lot of points if you look at Caleb's career. He's got shit ton of cups and yo. Three million games played. Yeah. I hit a big bet this too this weekend. Did you I, buy donuts? Oh, it wasn't as big as, as yours. But it doesn't have to be that big. Well, maybe I'll get donuts tomorrow then since I hit it. I bet anytime goal scorer Zach Hyman specifically for the second period against Ottawa when they were going on the power play plus four hundred. Ooh, I'm yeah. surprised it was that like plus yeah. 400 is great, but I'm yeah. surprised it wasn't like higher given the specificity I, of the bet. I bet it was because they were going right into the power play. Yeah. And then Dry Saddle scored. I was like, ah, well, there goes that chance. And then right after he scored, and I was like, very nice. Plus 400. What is, I know you're not supposed to ask people how much they bet. I know I'm supposed to ask you, but I actually just want to know how much you bet. Just on the long shot. I put a, I put 25 bucks on that. Nice. What does that come out to? 800 bones? Yeah, yeah, 800, I wish. No, like, yeah, 125. Five to one. Oh. So that'll pay the bills. Is that how people bet? Like, do they bet lots of props or do they generally bet money line? Like, how do most Money people- line is pretty, doesn't have much value. This weekend against well, Toronto is pretty, is. like this weekend was good, Toronto. Because I didn't know those were only like minus 130. Were, I, I, I didn't like we were dogs. It drives me fucking nuts. That's why I didn't touch the We were the movie. favorites. Against Toronto. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I meant the reverse. Right. And then Toronto was like plus whatever. But like Ottawa, I said, I think the others were minus 400 favorites, something like that. What does that mean? It means you will not win anything. Like if you put 10 bucks on, I think I, you I win four. I can't even quantify. And this is why I like decimals. Because it would have been 1.25 to 1. So every dollar is a dollar twenty five. Nice luck. That's easy. I still don't get it. It means because I think with the minuses, how it works is if you, you to win, everything's based off a hundred dollar unit. So I think you'd have to bet four hundred dollars to win five hundred dollars to win a hundred dollars. It's about four hundred dollars to win one hundred dollars. Like yes. To net a hundred dollars. Good Lord. So you get five hundred back. I believe is how the minus system. Works. Right. That is right. See, yeah. My brain just computes like if it, the minus is too big, then I just don't bet on it. Yeah. So it'd be one point two five to one. One point two five to one. One hundred four hundred into five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see who the hell was it? Des Bryant? That guy? Yeah. That is a good gentleman, yeah. He bet like 60 grand or some shit and got back like half a million or something I saw on the weekend and they hand paid him. Oof. And they said this huge brick of cash they gave him. And he was like, yeah, yeah. And it was a <laughs> 10 bloody leg parlay hit. That reminds me of when we went on the plastic ponies and they played out Tyler, like, what was it, like $1,200 in cash? Yeah. And he was just, he's so happy holding his hand out and getting them counted into his hand. It's the greatest. I have the photos of it. I love those pictures. It's almost time to get our tax money back from that pony. Yes, man. it is tax season. Which reminds me, I got to do my taxes. Apologies to my accountant. Yeah, till the end of April. Yeah. No rush. They're hassling me. And I just tell them I'm almost done. Every I'm time. Same thing. I haven't, I haven't started. Tales old as time. <laughs> yeah, I haven't started. <laughs> You're the only one. <laughs> yep. Almost done. Everyone's almost done until April 29th. <laughs> and they're still almost done. For our friends at Bed99 is the number one online gaming experience in Canada built by Canadians for Canadians. Elevate your experience with Bet99 with fast payouts and smooth transactions provided that you are 19 plus, can play responsibly, and you're not a person in Ontario. Got a couple of futures I'm, kidding, um, I'm asking you if, about... 
March Madness. Are you paying attention to our bracket? I am in dead last. I'm actually oh. doing pretty good. I actually have no, I've, I have no idea. I haven't looked. Okay, you're, I it. Well, I need to still pay really attention to March Madness. Well, I got an eye on it. Because who do you like last week? New frame. Am I leading? Dufresne. You're in six. I don't know where they are. That's though. not really good. Well, you're like tied for second. Well, then Sam tied for second. Well, I just saw you were six, and then you wanted to phone, so I had to five, maneuver five. quickly. Uh, so currently, oh, yeah. but as soon as Creighton or uh, Connecticut, is it Yukon falls out of this? I am in the running. So currently Yukon. Holy cow. There's a lot of people in this. <laughs> How many we got in there? 60. Yeah. Cause all I know is I'm dead last or uh, second to second last. To last yeah. Who'd you pick? I don't remember. You really leaned on Purdue. eh? <laughs> well, I like their mascots. They had two of them. Are you There's tanking for Macalini or some shit? Yeah. <laughs> well, I also had BYU the going Tudini quite far for because Macalini for Hackabrini. What's his name? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Celebrini, whatever. Celebrini, because BYU's Back mascot in for Macklin <laughs> looks like he's been raving at 4 a.m. So I just liked him. I liked the cut of his jib, and I thought they'd go a long way. As a result, they did not. Like gritty. Mm-hmm. Kind of. So currently, according to our friends at Bet Nine Nine, UConn favored to win March Madness plus two fifteen. They've dropped down. They were plus four hundred going in. Okay, hold on. So plus two fifteen. So you put ten dollars down, and you'll win twenty five dollars back. Yeah, twenty one money. It's you to thirty five bucks. Okay. Because two plus two fifty is three point five to one. I understand. Houston Cougars up next at plus five two five. You should bet on them to go deep. Who doesn't love a cougar? <laughs> Purdue plus six hundred. Arizona Wildcats plus eight seventy five. North Carolina plus twelve. Where's Alabama? That's They're right. Not listed in the in South. The They're not ah. listed Did in the top that? five. This is not good. You know. That's who I picked. Lehman. But this tournament doesn't make sense ever. I it's won the wild. first nine. I did pretty good, actually. Do you know what you're doing when you pick those? Or did you do something like I did where you just picked mascots? Uh, I didn't, I didn't no. know Grand Canyon was a school. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. That's, Canyon. that's just people who live feral in the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> they they get together <laughs> once a year and play basketball. <laughs> then go back and live in the hills. That would make sense. <laughs> I've been living in these hills 40 it's years. They only oh, come out to dunk. You're looking for the Crimson Tide, Lehman? Yes. Plus 3,500. Well, they're, they're so far so good. I don't even know where they're at, but they're still in. Mm. So are they in the Sweet 16 now? Are they in the East, Southwest, or Midwest? They're somewhere. They got to be South of Alabama. You think so? so that's what I would thought. Southeast? No. Nope. Thinking of general geography? Not there. Oh, they're in the North. Are they in the Midwest? <laughs> <laughs> they're in... <laughs> they are in... Nope. Oh, there they are in the West. I don't know why it bothers me, but there's a lot of kids that play in this March Madness tournament that wear t-shirts under their jerseys. And I don't like it's it. It's a college thing. I don't like mm. it. I know. I don't get it. Wait, I show the guns off, man. Some of them wear like lycra sleeves on their yeah. arms and legs too, but that's for injuries. Isn't that's, it? Well, it's technically it's, it looks theory, cool. Yes, but it's it's so look gangster. Look, yeah. I think it's just look. like, who is it? Alan Iverson always had that shit on. But he had something wrong with his arm. Didn't he originally? I have no idea. I think he had a reason. And then everybody just wanted to look like AI. I thought it looked cool. Cause yeah. he had one on his leg too, or the opposing leg, something like that. Did you see that thing a few years ago? Cause sometimes they do this final in like a football stadium. I, oh, geez. Oop phone? No, I think it was, um, that's how it happened. Exactly. Wisconsin versus whoever. And there was a slight breeze in the football stadium. And it was like throwing off everybody's shots. I, oh, that's they, interesting. No, the it was final to a final four. It was like the final four or whatever. Yeah. Then they've done it once. They and did. And they, they should never do it again. hundred percent. It was like Wisconsin versus someone when Frank Kaminsky was on the team. They played it on an no. aircraft carrier out to sea. <laughs> Anyone oh, can bet. The breeze was too talking. much. <laughs> yeah. Now and the breeze talking. threw him off. That's what blew me away. Who was it playing tennis? That Was it Tiger hitting balls in Dubai? Didn't someone play tennis on the helipad? Oh, yeah, Roger Federer. How come the ball didn't get blown away by the wind? Oh, it, pro- it probably, like, was Fake a news. factor for sure. Like, it was just to get the photo op. Okay. I think they played a match. I don't think so. Okay. Maybe. Wow, you like, fucking hit the ball and a gust of wind blows yeah. that bitch off and then you fall off. You mentioned Tiger. I was I was just playing around on YouTube the other day and in my algorithm it had Tiger Woods' best moments from, like, the 90s. Oh, boy. Oh, kind of forgot how dominant he was. Dude, insanely dominant. <laughs> Unreal. Like, I don't think it can ever be matched. No, not with Liv. <laughs> Speaking of which, I wrapped up full swing. So good this season with nice. the Liv stuff. Ooh, I gotta start that. Can you imagine like 21 year old <laughs> Tiger Woods playing for Liv and playing in shorts? He probably wouldn't have turned down a Billy three rounds a year or a week and eight Although, rounds a year. I wonder what Papa Earl would have said about Liv. At Take, that the, money, Take the money. Probably. 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 <laughs> 
If you watch full swing at all, won't you? No. Cause when they talk to uh, Dustin Johnson, his answers are very funny. He's just like, yeah, they paid me more and I golf less. What's of course. Yeah. It's very matter of fact. And I appreciate it. The impulsive one where they talk about live is funny. Yeah. He's like, I could barely survive. <laughs> it's like, dude, his career earnings like <laughs> yeah. 200 million. He's like, yeah, I had to do what's best for my family. I'm like, wouldn't making sure 200 million bro. dollars have helped your family. Like, like, like I, 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 I don't, you made the decision. Just be honest. Yeah, just say it was a lot of fucking money. So you took it. It's not because like, <laughs> but like what needed, what does that guy food? really want at that point of his life? Like you just always find new stuff to want. Like he's like, you know what? The hardwood on my yacht is atrocious <laughs> to live. Like what more do you want in life after 200 million? In the, revenue? the funny part, I haven't watched season two yet, but the Ian Poulter one in the first season, he, when he was talking about wanting to play on a Ryder cup, he's like, man, we just spent the first 20 minutes talking about you not making cuts anymore. And now you're like, I'm going to make the Ryder cup team, but I can't do it if I'm on live. It's like, I think that dream is, is long gone anyway for you. You know, bloody he was a gamer though. He was unbelievable. He was one of the he's Ryder so Cup fun. gamers. A legend of the Ryder Cup. Yes. You know what blows me away is when they show these lists of the 10 highest paid athletes of all time. That Nicholas and Palmer are like 1.6 and 1.5 million billion, sorry, aggregate earnings. Nicholas oh, and, from all their stuff. Nicholas and Palmer are top 10 all time. Yeah. It's like Tiger bloody jordan yeah. and then they're there too because like they make money from course design but both of them are there like yeah. that's wild to yeah. me that like a fringe not golf isn't fringe but it's not the big four and they haven't been competitively going in what 20 30 years and they're still top 10 so i've got i just pulled up a article from sportico that did um some 50 highest paid athletes of all time adjusted for inflation for 2023 one year sure can sure. I interest you in a couple of those? Well, tell me where Nicholas and uh, Palmer are at. Uh, well, Jack Jack Nicholas on this list is number six, and Arnold Palmer is number four. They must have pushed. Like, how do they both get that rich? Is what blows me away. You think there's only like one pie of money, and they're both like, "I'll take half," and then they're both. Still Arnold there. Palmer invented that drink, and that probably lifted drink. Him up. And he's like, he was, wasn't he one of like the, <laughs> yeah, the of the Golf Channel? Yes, he was. You're right. Yeah, like, there's a lot of. Yeah, and and he had clubs, Palmer clubs. My grandpa used to that. exclusively wear Arnold Palmer shirts. Yeah, he had clothing. Gold. And Nicholas did a lot of course design, but still, like one point five billion worth of course design. Well, adjusted to today's dollars. But, he, but yeah, I, but even if it isn't adjusted for today's dollars, unless I'm reading these lists wrong, I think they're still in the top ten list of all time paid athletes. Currently, the goat, Wanye, eat a goat. Michael Jordan, three point seven five billy. Oh, and that is just accumulating immensely year over year. And he yeah. sold his stake in the Hornets. Thank goodness. Why do you say that? Because it was an awful run. Because now he also owns a NASCAR team. Oh, does he? Yeah, which I learned in full speed after just watching that full docuseries. Speed. Yeah. <laughs> Likes NASCAR. Did but. you know Tiger Woods' his caddy was the number one paid athlete from New Zealand? Yes. Yeah. Steve Williams. Yeah. That was funny. <laughs> number two. You brought up Tiger Woods. He is listed currently at two point six six billion dollars. Even, but Elon has a lot of that. <clears throat> Why would happen? <laughs> Number three, Cristiano Ronaldo, one point nine two. Arnold Palmer listed at one point seven six. Like, how much money did you make off that drink? I guess it's in Seven Eleven and shit. Like, <laughs> it's delicious. You know, lemonade and iced tea. Come on, everybody's having a good time with that. Best of both worlds. Uh, rounding out the top 10 really quickly. LeBron James is five. Jack Nicholas is six. And he was listed at 1.67. Lionel Messi also listed at 1.67. David Beckham, 1.5. Roger Federer, 1.49. Floyd Mayweather, number 10 at 1.48. And then Phil Mickelson, 11 wow, at 1.43. I, I know he makes bank, but wow. Like Floyd Mayweather had it. Well, he never really lost a fight. So he didn't really, he did train a lot. But he, but he owned, like he owned all his TV and yeah, stuff yeah. like that's and Arnold right. Palmer's like, you ever mix lemonade and iced tea together? <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Uh, Mike Tyson is at 18 on this list. I don't feel as good about that fight anymore. Why? Because Jake Paul gets to wear headgear and stuff. He does? Does he yeah. really? But Tyson doesn't? <clears throat> Tyson does not. Does that seem fair? Shouldn't does Tyson not. get to wear headgear too? Or Jake Paul wears no headgear and goes night night real fast. Like you would like at least that's an acknowledgement to the to the goat. Yeah. You know that Tyson's gonna try. 
Oh, yeah. Like, there's zero likelihood he would take a pot, like, throw a fight or mm-hmm. any of that. His training I, I, videos are now are fun. I don't really care about any of Jake Paul's fight, but I actually, I'm going to watch this This will one. be the number one fight of all time for viewership. Netflix free? Is free? Free on Netflix. Well, you have to have a subscription. Yeah. But, but that's wild, man. Yeah. So when is it? Uh, July something, right? Yeah, something like that. Jake Paul's so crazy. Like, oh, YouTuber fights old Mike Tyson. Like, if you explain that to yourself in the 1999, yeah. like, what the fuck? In the future, singers fight guitar players. Like, what? <laughs> Speaking of Tyson, did you see that bite in the UFC this weekend? That was crazy. Yeah, did you see that? No. He bit oh, him on his was, bicep? Yeah. yeah, someone bit him. Ooh. And he got tattooed, the teeth. Uh, I remember that. I remember watching that fight live, the Holyfield Tyson fight where he bit his ear off. Back in the 90s, there Lehman, boxing was huge. Isn't that crazy? It's amazing I didn't break the skin. Yeah. That guy got uh, fired from the UFC after the fight, too. Really? Holy yeah. cow. That is a wild bite. <laughs> yeah, they He's fired fighting him. Jake Paul. That probably hurt <laughs> yeah. so bad. Probably oh, coming, though. a bite fight. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that slap league Dana White's trying to get going? Oh, yeah. That thing is nuts. This is not... This is not right. I don't like UFC personally because I feel like it's human cockfighting. This slap league to me it's ends with someone's head <laughs> popping off. Yeah, or like a busted like eardrum or something. There's like there's skill and strategy. This is just like, how hard can I freaking like it must clap blow out your fucking eardrum. Has to. Like absolutely club. Them. Has to. The pressure on your brain of you getting a Oh, it's I don't even I don't like it, man. It doesn't like, make me feel good. I sound like a dinosaur when I talk about hockey because I like fighting in hits, but like <laughs> that, like that is not. Com- <laughs> They're inventing CTE pr- reducing helmets, and everybody's running around these big old baubles on their head, and they got the <laughs> slap league. Yeah, <laughs> where you just like you you put your hands down, you hold the guard, and you take her. No like, like, defending for like eight grand, <laughs> you know, and then you can't hear for the rest of your life. Yeah, it's good. It's a good. Live in Coral Gables, Florida, and sign autographs at. Local swap meets. You shit. wish. Yeah, you you're showing up at like a to flea a sla- market. Aspiring slappers. I don't understand how they sell that to people. Like, how are you? Like, you know what? I am gonna go into the slap league. <laughs> go deaf in both ears within two matches, and then have a CTE filled life thereafter. And it's never different. Like at least the UFC, every fight is different. You don't really know how it's going to end. The S- slap league, someone's just going to get slapped and knocked out. You can get That's it every fight. Times and yeah, they go fight. back. Don't they go back and yes, forth? Yeah, one they guy do. dies basically. <laughs> that don't strike me as right. So I was just curious about some attendance and stuff. So in this is a little bit old, but in March of 2023, they had a slap fight event. Power slap league is what it's called at the O2 Arena. Would that be in London? Oh, yeah. no. The attendance was 17588 It was also on pay-per-view and brought in an estimated $8.6 million in pay-per-view earnings. <laughs> He's paying oh. these guys like $100 yeah, appearance man. fee. Yeah, it seems One off. earplugs, you won't need two. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't like it. No, no. <laughs> it's it's, I've seen a real cockfight in Mexico. I've seen it in a stadium. Well. I saw it in the With the razor blades and yep. everybody waving money. It's televised in Thailand. I and went this to is much, much worse. I went to one in the Philippines in Manila and they sat us <laughs> rinkside for it. I'm like, what's going on? Like I knew what I was doing, but I didn't know about the blades. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. And then after one of them went down, they go in the rink, hold it up and yellow dinner time. And everyone went bananas. And the betting on that thing was wild. But that's like a thousand times more humane than slap fight league. <laughs> Those are chickens who gives a shit. We eat 10 trillion a day. <laughs> These are human beings with like kids and junk. I don't know, man. Well, I'm amazed they can get like licensed for that. They just like pitch the Nevada Gaming Commission. They're like, you know, boxing, right? Got an idea. Yeah. Most of that out the window. Yeah. Just big All guys. Safety slapping. gone. Yeah. Imminent danger. The Olympic boxing people, are like, we wear headgear and, t- and they don't, I think they get to wear mouth guards. Yeah. They, yeah. Man, for sure. There's no strategy. No, there's not. And you just, there's no defense either. You just take it. I don't like it. We're (laughs) not far away from dueling. (laughs) You know what? Which I'm down for. Yeah. (laughs) Dana White's like, I can get dueling approved. (laughs) I can get it approved anywhere. (laughs) Yeah. I would love to watch. We got to go to Madagascar and fight in an oil rig slightly (laughs) off the main shore, but I can get that approved. (laughs) Feels like it's probably coming. 
Dana White will have his own streaming service of some kind. <laughs> we're going off seas. If or X or somebody said tomorrow morning we're killing somebody live on television and it's sponsored by Monster Energy, I swear the ratings <laughs> would be 100 million Huge. people watching. Huge. It goes back to our gladiator days. Well, Guys they used to back in the day put shit. people in the, yeah, the town square and like kill them for like days and yeah. shit. People go watch and bring in lunch. <laughs> Better times. Something to consider. <laughs> you know, we're always looking for things to do, Lehman. A lot of options. They could just put it on Fight Island that Dana White already owns. I'd watch that. Fire Island? Fight Island. Yeah, Fight Island. And maybe the people date each other just to like satisfy <laughs> both of my loves. Because of COVID? Yeah. 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 Oh, that was the island he could do his bouts on even though the world was shut down? Yeah. And now only um, Russian fighters fight that now because they can't go anywhere else. <laughs> what so a weird, you know. weird future timeline. <laughs> Wani, did you hear the uh, the Drake verse, or not the Drake verse, the Kendrick Lamar verse where he disses Drake and J. Cole? Yes. Thoughts? I don't know, man. These are all country club rappers sparring with one another. That's what I thought when I first heard so it. stupid. <coughs> Kendrick, honestly, I swear to God, you've wasted your legacy. You're the Pearl Jam of rappers, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> Early in your life, you killed it. Everyone thought you were going to be the goat, and then you spent your time screwing around fighting Ticketmaster. The last one had no jams on it either. No and man. 95 was good, but the rest of it, there's no jams. But like Good Kid, Mad City. Oh, masterpiece. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And then that's Pearl Jam 10. Yeah. Yeah. Good verse, though. That uh, that future. Who's the other guy? I don't even know who that is. Who? The future album that just came out that that song's on. Oh, Metro Boomin? Yeah. He's a music be? producer. Oh, we, we I never trusted you or whatever. Yeah, he's a he's a big time music producer. That album's good though. He's now to the point where he gets to make his own songs and put his name in. He's he's reached DJ Khaled level. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good album for sure. It's a really good album. Sure. They need more shtick though. I want more guys yelling out their own names at the beginning of songs. You know what's good is Vultures 2. Vultures 2 is really good. Oh, wait a minute, Vultures 2? Yeah. Where do you find that? YouTube. They're doing listening parties. I haven't heard that. They got it out. So you can have trouble clearing those songs again like you did in the first one. Like the Everybody Backstreet's Back song? Yeah. That's a good song. It's a great You'll song. Never right? hear it on iTunes. Where'd it go? Only on, it's on YouTube. YouTube. Mm-hmm. Well, it's on YouTube. I think it's a little bit weird how he keeps that sassy new wife of his wearing no <coughs> clothes and going out for dinner with his kid and shit. That's a little weird. bit odd. Strange to look at. What are you teaching your kid? Well, he also wears sock shoes. So. Mm-hmm. Like, I get the nod to Kim. You're like, well, easy come, easy go. Here's a new one. But don't take your kid out. He's got to type. When you get the new gal with her buns out. Come on now. Buns always out. Unbelievable. Pants optional. In that She's an architect. Is she really? Yes. She was a like one of the heads of design for Yeezy. And now she just does what? She's married to Kanye West. Walks around with like weird costumes on. And She's, nothing. She is responsible for his worldwide press tour. Most people right now know who she is. It's wild. That is wild. Did she just get in trouble, though, because she was naked in France or something? Yeah, man. She's naked every which way. Well, normally the French are accepting of such things. Lehman, thoughts on Paris? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It's just it doesn't exist. Don't like it. No, not for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to marry Bianca Sensori if she were to break up with Kanye? I don't even know who that is. I see. The feud, the, the feud runs deep. It's a <laughs> cultural thing. Yep. It's thousands, well, th- hundreds of years, thousands of years. I don't know how long you Brits been around since the beginning. I believe. <laughs> Is that right? Just yeah. Listen to them. <laughs> listen. To them. They can trace their bloodline back to the dinosaurs. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I believe so. Any commentary on your countryman, poor Kate? It's sad. Kind of crazy. Yeah. Sending her our best. Been of a bit of a, a run for the royal family. There's a lot of people that delete some tweets. I'll tell you that much. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when the internet convinces itself of shit, man, we're now 0 for 2 of late. The internet is never wrong. What was the first one? Otani. Oh, yeah. And now look at what that's doing. <laughs> that is a whole Ooh, other thing. That is, is, that just gets more unpacked. You Do see we? how they're just like, oh, this guy didn't uh, work for the Red Sox. This interpreter didn't go to university. <clears throat> this interpreter never went to school. This interpreter killed a guy with a fork. Yeah. Like, they're just trying to throw this poor killed bastard under the bus fork. to save Otani. Do we assume that he's just doing the, you know, rap yes. entourage thing? Yes. Yeah, he's got it. He's right? doing, he's like the brakes on your car. He is currently fulfilling his purpose. Yeah. And Otani's like, you may have to go to jail for this. And he's like, I'll do it. <laughs> and then he's going to buy him a mountain in Osaka and say, you on, kick it there, old boy. On Dana White's Dual Island. 
This could go down as the biggest falling on the knife for your boy oh. since Samurai's. <laughs> <laughs> like for real. Do they have like, how long is he going to have to go to jail for? Well, I don't know. It depends on what's going to happen here, man. They're opening an investigation. Now you can trust an MLB investigation about this much, but still <laughs> remember those same guys who looked into steroids. Like this seems to be fine. <laughs> Houston Astros. They're all now playing again. Have no one lost a ring. Ah, oh, they bang on the garbage cans. No big deal. The George people Springer, on, beloved Blue Jay. The people on Twitter, they're like, you have to let Pete Rose into the Hall of Fame, though, if you don't send Otani to jail. Like, it, that won't happen. It always comes back to Pete Rose, doesn't it? They love Pete Rose. <laughs> he should oh, be in the Hall of Fame. He probably should. Of be, all yeah. the players that to happen to is Shohei Otani after that deal, too. Wow. Uh, I just, I, he doesn't strike me as a guy who bets on sports. But you have to have an outlet. He doesn't do anything. He just plays baseball all day but long. Like, that's like when, when they're in the moment playing their sport, like that's all they eat, sleep and breathe. But then why Michael Jordan play so much gambling stuff? Cause he needs that high all the time. Well, he's like a, um, well, I mean, Otani's like, but like, I shouldn't say an adrenaline junkie, but like, he's always chasing. The- I think it's far more likely a man who makes a $700 million contract after having made $700 million. I find it far more likely he's betting four and a half million on non-baseball sports. They said, so then what the problem be if it's not baseball? They don't want them betting on sports, period. But like, I don't understand why. If they're not betting on their own sport, let them do it. In my opinion. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's I betting agree. on McDavid. Two they're going to have a real tough way. Oh, this, like, is, I, this, yeah, this is going to be interesting to see. Like they, <laughs> MLB is like at all costs, he has to be. Yeah. He well, has to play. Like this is Michael Jordan go to play baseball for a year. Maybe he has to go play for the Bulls for a year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, fun. He's a good Laker. Yeah, becomes yeah. a Laker. You got to go be an LA Laker. Cool. Somebody in LA has got to make this revenue. Like imagine you're the Dodgers right now. Yeah. Why did this get <laughs> Like, how did this get leaked? Like, how did this hit? The I wonder open? if this this is Blue Jays' revenge. Oh, that sushi restaurant's talking. revenge. Yeah, like, we <laughs> thought we had a restaurant rezo for fifty people <laughs> on a Donnie night. Kikuchi called this us to make our, year, our yeah. life. We kept Shut the private room the closed. Yeah, that, Look into Mister <laughs> Otani. Us Five thousand dollars. We're gonna get our pound yes. of flesh. Look into Mister Otani, will you? <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, terrible. We're gonna follow it. We will follow it. Did you see how he's staying beside Betts on the field last night? Oh, I did see that. Yeah. So like he's Betts. like taking warm up and it's Otani and then the Betts oh. guy standing beside him. Like they got to trade that Betts guy <laughs> right fucking uh, now. We don't need that happening again. <laughs> oh, and that's the kind of stuff that the internet latches on to. It's like the, uh, the Brady Dick Jersey swap thing. It's I just feel like Otani's so like above it all and aloof that he's just like sitting in a room. They're like, did you bet on sports? And he's just there. <laughs> blinking not saying a word They're like we can't figure this out i mean yeah. he's not saying shit he doesn't have an interpreter yeah <laughs> the interpreter's just been shipped home in a box eh well i know is that his new interpreter he better have his shit dialed in well they're saying like oh he didn't otani didn't even know the interpreter the dodgers hired it him for him but at the same time he has it in his contract if you fire my interpreter i can quit yeah Hmm. Pretty good clause for a random guy you don't know. Mm-hmm. How interesting. It is interesting. There you have it. Well, Some Otani talk. He won't he'll 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 he won't say one word. No. No. And he'll just hit nine hundred dingers and everyone will be like, Well, Pete Rose can't what do scandal. That. Yeah. Yeah. As long as the Dodgers are winning, he's hitting bombs. Come on. He's not pitching this year. No. He's gotta wait no. for next year. More time to bet. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I still love you, Otani. And if I go to a Dodgers game this year, I will be purchasing your jersey. I will absolutely purchase an Otani do- Dodgers jersey and his interpreter. For his, <laughs> his interpreter jersey? A jersey? Somebody's got to get one. Guy deserves it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> geez. You want to talk about being the ultimate That's bro? That's a team guy. <laughs> that, is that is a team guy. Ultimate team. You think Valtteri Botas is the ultimate team guy? This I guy thought he was. Just Who's that guy? That. Valtteri. F1 driver. F1 driver. He was Lewis Hamilton's teammate yeah, for a long time. By the way. give the lead away back to Lewis to win. The oh. Aussie Open this weekend? No max. Third no. lap he was out. And I'm like, oh my God, we got a race. L- Lewis went out too? Yeah. And then Appendix Man. Call yeah. science I love one. all the memes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sean Leclerc on the, on the doctor's table, like, take them all. <laughs> like, like, like they're always struggling to like, lose weight on the car and now lose weight on the driver by taking out his organs. <laughs> he got his appendix taken out. Anyways. Well, 
The Real Life Podcast brought to you by DoorDash. Uh, Bet 99, Snow Valley Aero Park and Rainbow Valley Campground. That is your Monday episode in the books. Tyler is still dead. We will be back mm-hmm. on Thursday with or without Christopher Chalmers. Bye-bye. <laughs>